Want to watch football without the restrictions of blackouts or cable? Check out expressvpn.com to help you get access to all the live games. Sign up today using the link in the description to get three free months. Yo, what up, Bolt fam? It's the director, Chargers fans. I'm pretty sure by now, most of us definitely understand that this year is shaping up to be something really special for the Bolts, right? And it's one that Chargers fans have been waiting a long, long time for. A long, painful time. But you know what? The Chargers finally did it. They've pushed their chips forward. They've gone all in, and this roster is looking absolutely lethal both on offense and on defense i'm just so stoked dude so excited for kickoff this upcoming september but you know what this video is about i believe that the chargers have created an environment that is really promising for individual players as well and i think it's going to translate this year i'm talking career seasons for some of the biggest bolts on the roster so today this video is going to highlight a number of Chargers players that I believe could see their biggest season yet. And this video is also going to kind of uh, maybe act as a light stat prediction video as well as I'm going to be, you know, highlighting their uh, career highs previously, as well as what I think they're capable of here in 2022. So it should be a really good one. I'm really hoping that this video paints a picture of how deadly these guys could really be. Because to me, the evidence is super clear and it's really starting to drive up the hype. I don't know about you guys, man, but my hype levels right now turned up to 11, ripped the knob off, getting super stoked for the 2022 season. Now, before we do kickoff, guys, question in the comments like we always do. Let's hear your sleeper picks, right? Who is a sleeper bolt, in your opinion, that's going to have a career season in 2022? You can even list one on offense and on defense just to spice things up a little bit. Now, before we do kick off, hit us up with a like and sub. If you do enjoy this Chargers content, the small amount of time you guys take to hit the like, sub, and bell notification helps me out a lot. Let's get into this one. Lights. Camera. Action. Chargers who could have a career season in the upcoming year 2022. Let's get right into it, man. We got a lot of players that I wanted to highlight on here and some that let's say I have a top five, right? Some that didn't quite make the top five for various reasons. So I did want to start off with, let's say some honorable mentions, but I did categorize them just a little bit different, right? So let's start off here with JC Jackson, who's in the category of uh, close, but already a very high bar, right? J.C. Jackson, career high, nine interceptions in 2020, followed by eight interceptions in 2021. J.C. Jackson was a very highly coveted free agent this last offseason and one that the Chargers are super lucky to have on the roster right now. And that's because of his consistency. This dude is an interception machine, a turnover machine, I should say. And this is something and an element to the Bolts that we've not had in a very, very long time. I think he's going to be in for a very promising season in 2022. However, nine interceptions was his career high in 2020. That's going to be a very, very difficult thing to replicate, which doesn't mean that he's going to have a bad season at all. He's still going to be a huge difference maker for the Chargers. But my prediction for him in this category, at least, is going to be six interceptions in 2022, which, trust me, guys, is a lot better than anything that we've seen on the Chargers from the cornerback position in a very, very long time. Next up on the list of close but a high bar, we've got Khalil Mack back-to-back, -back, you know, best offseason acquisitions for the Chargers. These guys are, are proven and ready to play. Khalil Mack, who is going to be a huge difference maker for this team, uh, does have 15 sacks as his career high in 2015, followed by uh, 12 and a half sacks in 2018. Now, some people have pointed out that, yes, Khalil Mack, maybe in the twilight years of his career, maybe coming off an injury, might not put up the best stats, at least compared to what he's done in the past because of these other factors. I beg to differ, man. I think Khalil Mack, like we mentioned at the top of the show, is being put in a very, very good situation. One that's going to give him a really good shot at maybe getting close, if not surpassing his career high in seasons past. I, however, do believe that Khalil Mack uh, maybe doesn't reach the 15 sack mark, still is going to make his mark on the defense with a very respectable number. 
number. So I'm going to give him a prediction of 12 and a half sacks, which let's be honest, guys, is a very high and very, very good number for an opposite edge rusher of Joey Bosa. Last season, the, uh, the next leader, let's say, I think Joey Bosa had something like 10 and a half sacks last season. The next highest was Uchenna Nuosu with five sacks. So when I say 12 and a half sacks is a difference maker for this team, definitely believe it. And there's a lot of other things that Khalil Mack's going to bring to the table in terms of improving this team and helping other players on the roster. But still, 12 and a half sacks just as a base is looking very, very nice. Next up in this category of close but a high bar is Austin Eckler. Let's be honest, dudes. If you had this dude in fantasy last season, you were grinning ear to ear because this dude, 20 touchdowns uh, in 2021, his career highs, by the way, 911 rushing yards, 647 receiving yards, 20 total touchdowns. The dude was an absolute monster out there on the football field. Now, the Chargers are moving pieces around a little bit on that offense. I think in terms of making life a little bit easier in guys like Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen, and Justin Herbert. And in Eckler's case, they have added a lot of players to the roster to really boost this power run. Uh, Xander Horvath, Isaiah Spiller, even Zion Johnson should bring reinforcements behind uh, Austin Eckler to really lighten his load a little bit. Does this mean that he's going to regress drastically? No, he's still the RB1 on this team. But you know what? Something like 1,500 total yards and 20 touchdowns is, again, a very high bar. So my prediction for him in 2022 is going to be 1,280 total yards and 16 touchdowns. Still definitely a beast and probably a top five uh, running back in the league when it comes to scoring especially in fantasy football. And lastly, on the close but a high bar list is going to be Keenan Allen. The dude's been a very consistent stud for the Chargers for so many years. Uh, his best year coming in 2017, where he logged 1,393 yards and six touchdowns. Never really the touchdown guy. He's always put up respectable numbers. But really, where he does shine is through moving the football, right? Getting those tough earned third downs and making sure those drives are sustained. Now, again, I don't think he's going to reach close to 1400 yards this season as i do think the chargers are trying to get their other weapons especially the the physically dominant ones especially when it comes to the red zone more involved so my prediction for this season as he does maybe see more slot work is going to be 1055 yards and five touchdowns still a huge part of this offense a drive sustainer and definitely one of the best offensive weapons on this team now, next, let's get into what I'll call just the honorable mentions, ones that guys maybe haven't been in the league that long. Maybe their circumstances are a little bit different, but ones that I wanted to mention anyway. Starting off here with Josh Palmer. Now, Josh Palmer kind of becoming a fan favorite out here, right? Coming from, you know, the uh, draft last season, most Chargers fans didn't know what to think of him. Then he goes out there and shows huge flashes of big play potential. All of a sudden, a lot of us this season are hoping for bigger numbers, at least big uh, uh, impacts from uh, Josh Palmer here in his follow-up season. His career high last year, of course, was 353 yards and four touchdowns, but that came with so many incredible plays and some that really did help sustain drives and maybe even win games. My prediction for the 2022 season is going to be 780 yards and six touchdowns. So maybe not like wide receiver one or even wide receiver two numbers, but still very respectable numbers and ones that reflect how involved I think he's going to be in the offense this season. Next up in the honorable mentions is another rookie or previous rookie in Asante Samuel Jr. Coming into his second season last year, he tallied 43 tackles, 11 passes defended and two interceptions. Now, of course, you guys know the story of ASJ. The dude missed a lot of time last season due to back to back concussions. That's something scary and something to definitely take seriously. But even given that circumstance, Asante Samuel Jr. did put up very respectable numbers and showed that he has the potential to be a turnover beast. My prediction for Asante Samuel Jr., especially when surrounded with all these other, we'll say, weapons on the defense, is going to be 71 tackles, 24 passes defended, and five interceptions. When you're talking about a team that features Derwin James, J.C. Jackson, and a slew of other impressive defensive back talent, you might have to target Asante Samuel Jr. more often than you want to on offense. So I, that, to me, will give him more opportunities uh, to put up more interceptions. I think five interceptions, hopefully with the full season played, is not too far off to what I think really could go down in 2022. And then finally, the only non, let's say, second-year player on the honorable mentions is going to be Mike Williams. I really struggled between him and the uh, next player on this list as to uh, who to put in the uh, uh, honorable mentions and who to put the on the official list but I think Mike Williams is going to see a big boost this season I think the Chargers 
from what I'm speculating, are, again, shifting their pieces on the offense a little bit. I would expect a lot more slot work from Keenan Allen. I think they began that transition last season, whereas Mike Williams is becoming more of your X receiver, your featured wide receiver one. Does that mean that title belongs to uh, Mike Williams yet? No, that still does belong to Keenan Allen, but you could definitely call him a wide receiver 1B, right? And it's because of this, I think the opportunities for him are going to rise this season. His previous high in 2021, his best career season uh, was last year, just before his uh, extension this last offseason, uh, was 1,146 yards and nine touchdowns. I believe with a bit more opportunity at the X receiver spot, as well as the, the Chargers utilizing their weapons a little bit differently, Mike Williams is going to see a career season this year, and it's one that's going to be very impressive. I think that he puts up 1,368 yards and 11 touchdowns. He's definitely going to become one of those red zone beasts for Justin Herbert, who should have plenty of opportunities to score this season. Now, next up, we're going to get into the top five, okay? And these are guys to me that I wanted to highlight in this video. I wanted to mention a lot more Chargers, but these are definitely guys that are kind of at the front side of my view. And these are guys that I do think are going to be pretty big impacts, even if it is under the radar. So at number five, we're going to start here with Nasir Adderley as we make our way up to number one. Now, Nasir Adderley... A lot of hype when we decided to draft him in the second round a few years back, but I don't know if he's ever lived up to his potential, especially in terms of uh, what he can do in, ter in generating turnovers. His career high was last season in 2021, where he put up 99 tackles, five passes defended, but no interceptions. I think that's going to change this year. Because I believe Nasir Adderley is going to is going to benefit a ton from this new look on defense. You got to take a look at these different position groups, right? Defensive back has drastically been improved with the addition of J.C. Jackson. You go ahead and you match that up with the uh, improved edge rushers. It's going to give Chargers defensive backs a bit more opportunity to get their hands on the football. And if you're an opposing quarterback, you're going to want to be avoiding Derwin and J.C. like the plague. This may, like we talked about with Asante Samuel Jr., lead to more more passes coming uh, in your Adderley's direction in order to avoid those other obvious, you know, playmakers in JC and Derwin, while also maybe trying to avoid pressure in uh, Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa. So this to me is going to finally give Nasir Adderley that opportunity to really come down clutch and show what he's got in terms of generating picks. Uh, on year four, these opportunities are going to be very, very important as he's looking for a contract extension going into the future. So my prediction for Nasir Adderley at our number five spot is going to be 89 tackles. Maybe takes a little bit dip in the tackle category, but nine passes defended and four interceptions. His previous career high in interceptions was one. I believe Nasir Adderley is going to get way more opportunity to turn over the ball and make a, a difference for this team, an impact on this team on defense. And I do believe a lot of players on defense are going to get more opportunities for big plays as well. But Nasir Adderley to me was very important as he is on a contract year. And it's one that I'm hoping we finally see the potential come out that we saw in the second round of the drafts a couple of seasons back. Next up at uh, number four on this list, it's a player that I've done a whole video on. It's a player that I'm super high on and one that I think has a ton of potential to break out even this season. It's going to be Gerald Everett. And again, this comes into terms of surrounding environment. Gerald Everett is going to be getting a massive upgrade in both scheme fit and quarterback play. And to expand on that first, I do want to give you guys his previous career high. 478 yards, four touchdowns. He was pretty respectable, but maybe not utilized uh, to the most of his ability. Now, when it comes to scheme fit, Gerald Everett, I believe his and his previous teams, maybe outside of the Rams, didn't utilize their tight ends as much as maybe other teams would. The Seattle Seahawks, much more of a running team, whereas the, uh, let's say, Los Angeles Rams maybe looked for more run blocking and blocking in general from their tight end position. The Chargers are a different kind of team. This team wants to pass the ball. And if you take a look at, you know, our tight ends, even from last season with Jared Cook, they want a guy that's a vertical threat. They want a guy that can go up there and generate yards through the air. That's exactly what Gerald Everett is. So now he's finally in an environment where he can really let his talent shine. But what I think is even more important than even that is the quarterback play. Like we've mentioned in previous videos, last season, Russell Wilson, I thought that he was going to have a much bigger season than he did, but he did not. And that's because Russell Wilson himself had a very bad season, the worst season in his career. So we can't really count Russell Wilson as good quarterback play in Gerald Everett's past. 
Previous to that, he had guys like Jared Goff. Just nothing really to work with in terms of elite quarterback play. Now he's got Justin Herbert, who, in my opinion, is really going to love this weapon in Gerald Everett. I think Justin Herbert loves tight ends in general. We just really haven't seen the kind of court or the kind of uh, tight end to uh, really uh, uh, re mirror and reflect his ability as a quarterback either. So Gerald Everett, to me, big breakout candidate, but one that obviously, in my opinion, is going to be putting up a career season. So my prediction for Gerald Everett in 2022 is going to be 750 yards and seven touchdowns again he's not going to be a george kittle out there he's not going to be a mark andrews he's not going to be a travis kelsey but those are very respectable numbers uh, maybe reminiscent of the uh, hunter henry days with the chargers not too long ago so gerald everett definitely one to watch for next up at number three it's a highly coveted quarterback in Justin Herbert. Kind of crazy, right? Justin Herbert coming in at three. But at the same time, the defense are the ones that definitely got the bigger boost in terms of upgrades. But still, Justin Herbert, previous uh, career high, did come just last season in 2021 where he went off, right? In passing alone, he had 5,014 yards, 38 touchdowns to 15 interceptions. A lot of these dudes, he broke a lot of Chargers franchise records last year, especially by uh, crossing the 5,000 yard mark. That was big. But then you add on top of that, his rushing stats of 302 yards and three touchdowns, absolutely beastly season for Justin Herbert. And honestly, for me, it's truly insane to wrap your mind around the fact that Herbert is likely going to be even better in 2022, right? And it's because of a lot of these uh, upgrades that they've made this season. He's seen a massive amount of upgrades from his O-line, tight end, uh, the power run, as we mentioned with Austin Eckler, as well as maintaining his previous weapons, especially in a Mike Williams. But what I think is a big factor here that's going to pay huge dividends is the fact that this is the first time in Herbert's entire career that he's going to have consistency in terms of offensive scheme and an offensive coordinator. I'm not even kidding, dude. You, got, you go back to his days in Oregon. He's never had in back-to-back -back seasons the same OC, which is pretty insane to me. And I do think that's going to give him a big boost in terms of his performance. But above all else... This defense is going to make the biggest difference of all. Justin Herbert is going to have even more opportunities to get the football in his hands. Sure, the ultimate goal is to make sure that you improve that win column. Of course, that defense is certainly going to improve that stat. But when it comes to giving Justin Herbert's opportunities uh, in order to get the ball, drive down the field, and of course score, getting the ball via turnovers, via defense that's shut down is probably the best way to do it. So my prediction for Justin Herbert in, in uh, passing first is going to be 5,280 yards 46 touchdowns to 13 interceptions. Justin Herbert should at least solidify himself as a top three, two, or even the best quarterback in the league this season if they can carry the momentum from last year into 2022. I'll tack on top of that 226 rushing yards with three touchdowns. He's going to be one of the highest scoring players in the NFL this season. I just have a, I have a feeling in my gut that he's going to make a huge jump this season, even though his last season was very, very impressive. Now, getting into the top two, our next player is going to be, I think, to nobody's shock, Derwin James, right? We just did a whole video on Derwin James. We understand his potential. We understand how good he's going to be. But you know what? I still think, even with talking about it and trying to reflect how he's used and the stats even, I don't know if we can fully wrap our mind around how important this guy is. His previous career high, I decided to go with last season, 105 tackles, three and a half sacks, 13 passes defended to three interceptions. Now, a lot of these stats are kind of all over the place individual, individually, right? But when you really look at it from a wide scope, very impressive. He's all over the football field making a difference at every level, which is very insane. But when you really look at this season in particular, the additions on defense are really beneficial to Derwin James. It's going to really unlock his true potential because his flexibility offers Brandon Staley everything he could want in a versatile defensive let's call him weapon he's got his offensive weapon in justin herbert and his defensive weapon in derwin james and he's reinforced both pretty impressively this offseason not only this but derwin will also be playing with quality starters no matter where he uh, is playing on the field if he's playing a linebacker He's probably going to have some very nice pieces beside him in Kyle Van Noy, Drew Tranquil. If he's playing out, let's say, in the uh, 
uh, the X position, right? Like we described in the Derwin James video, which is basically your hybrid edge linebacker. Uh, then he's going to be playing next to Khalil Mack or Joey Bosa. If he plays in the star position, a.k.a. the slot, he's now next to J.C. Jackson, Asante Samuel Jr. He, all over the place, he's going to be playing next to quality difference makers. You add Derwin on top of that, it can really cause chaos. But you know what? His versatility is certainly the highlight of this entire video. Now he can finally move around without having to worry about leaving uh, footprints in other areas. The, the, the strong safety position that he plays naturally. Now we got guys like JT Woods uh, that can move into those positions. Maybe if you, could, you could even move a Bryce Callahan into that position to really keep that coverage uh, top notch. It's looking really good for Derwin this season, what I'm trying to get to. So individually, again, like I said before, these stats may not jump off the page, but together, it's certainly player defining. So my prediction for Derwin James this season, 118 tackles, five sacks, because I do believe uh, uh, Derwin's going to get plenty of opportunities to rush the passer from that hybrid edge position, maybe even from the slot, as well as two force fumbles, 18 passes defended, six interceptions, and I'm going to say it, dudes, two touchdowns. I think Derwin James closer to the line of scrimmage might be more punishing to opposing offenses this season. So Derwin James in for a big year because of this brand new environment Brandon Staley has created. And lastly, at number one, can you guys guess it? One of my favorite players in the entire NFL, it's going to be Joey Bosa whose previous career high came in 2017, 70 tackles, 12 and a half sacks, four forced fumbles. Now Bosa is definitely one of the best players on the Chargers roster, one that quickly became a fan favorite and one that honestly gets me excited to watch Chargers defense for the past uh, few seasons now, right? But we also have to acknowledge the fact that he's been bottled up for years. There's not a lot of players in the NFL that carry Joey Bosa's talent and opposing offenses understand this. And what they do is they throw every resource possible at Joey Bosa to keep him from getting free. Oftentimes this resulted in double, even triple teams at times. And it just did not give Joey Bosa a lot of opportunity to get free. What, Joey Bosa to me is one of, if not the biggest beneficiary to the additions that we've seen this offseason on defense. With Khalil Mack, now playing opposite of Joey Bosa, Bosa will finally be able to see his fair shares of one-on-ones. And what happens when you go one-on-one -on -one with Joey Bosa is that Bosa gets free and he gets to the quarterback. When he gets free, Bosa is one of the best in the league at reaching his target. And that's why I think Joey Bosa is going to have a huge year. You also uh, add on top of that, uh, the size and strength that they've added from to the interior of that defensive line and Sebastian Joseph Day, Austin Johnson, Joey Bosa is in for a monster season. I think of all the players on the roster, it's very close between him and Derwin James. Joey Bosa, to me, is one of the surest bets to see his career high in sacks and other uh, stats here. So my prediction for Joey Bosa, number 97, is going to be 78 tackles, 18 and a half sacks, and six forced fumbles. That's pretty bullish, dudes. That's among the league leaders in sacks for the past couple of seasons. I know TJ Watt surpassed him in like the 20s or something like that. But Joey Bosa, with numbers like these, could be considered your defensive player of the year. 18 and a half sacks would place him as one of the best edge rushers in the NFL. And it is because of what the Chargers have done in reconstructing this defensive roster. So my bottom line in this video, guys, is that this year is definitely shaping up to be a good one. It's going to result in big leaps for some of the team's best players. Some of the guys that I listed on here, you could have maybe moved or, or uh, Mike Williams into the top five category for me. That can, that's definitely huge. But other guys like Nasir Adderley, who we've kind of been waiting to see blossom into that player that deserves an extension with the Chargers, that does make a difference, that gets the ball back in the hands of Justin Herbert. Those guys are super important as well because it's a formula. And that's the, that's the reason why I love Brandon Staley so much. He's so calculated in his decision making. Every player is, go is going to have an impact on other players on this team. Derwin James, you, you know what I mean? Uh, JC Jackson being an addition is going to have an, a, 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 an impact on guys like Derwin James, even Joey Bosa, every level of that defense. Uh, adding Zion Johnson and, and Xander Horvath is going to really help out Austin Eckler. And yes, uh, Justin Herbert when it comes to, let's say, play action. 
There's so many different things that Brandon Staley is doing, these moving parts that are just opening up options for the Chargers that we didn't have in previous years, which is super exciting to think about because the Chargers put up a top five offense with those pieces last year. And now this defensive roster, it's really hard to believe that they're not going to be at least top 15, top 10, maybe even top five potential in 2022. Very, very calculated very rippling effects throughout the entire roster. And it's one that I'm very excited to see. So let me know in the comment section below again, who you think is going to see a career high season, especially those sleeper picks. I've seen some people commenting about, you know, what if Jerry Tillery does put up respectable numbers this year? What do we do? Because just like a lot of other players on this team, he's being put in a pretty good position and maybe he does pop off. That could definitely be a sleeper pick. Sebastian Joseph day. What if he finds tremendous success rushing the passer from the interior? Bryce Callahan. What if he sees something close to a career high, even at his twilight years in his career? There's a lot of possibilities there. So let me know your guys' picks in the comment section below. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. This has been The Director. If you did enjoy what you saw here, hit us up with a like and sub on your way out. We'll see you next time. And as always, bolt up and stay frosty. I'm telling you guys, it's the year of the BOSA.